<laughs> like, what am I trying to do? I'm trying, I'm like practicing, I'm like training myself to be able to handle anything because I want to be able to do anything I can imagine. So, like, one of my things that I'm slowly building is like, I will work with anybody anywhere in the country and I'll like drive around and I'll camp everywhere. To do that, I need to be able to get around the country like this and just always like find somewhere to sleep, find food, find ice for the esky. No, no, like how far I get on a tank of fuel like know when to fuel up, know when the, where the good fuel prices are. I'm just practicing, I'm just training to be good at traveling around this continent. So I think that, like, yeah, I don't want to rock up to meet people and be like completely cooked and out of my mind because I can't handle like the climate or the the like just being out here in, in the outback and that. I want to be able to handle myself in any situation and just show up like refreshed and restored and just like, oh yeah, of course, like slept um, slept out in the woods last night. Let's make some music videos today or like let's do something cool or let's do some healing work, all that kind of good stuff. I feel like, yeah, this it would be easier to do that if I was like at the part where I had heaps of those bookings lined up because I wouldn't do it as slow. I'd just sort of get a move on and get to where I'm going a little bit more and I'd only really stop and camp like out of necessity, like just to because I don't want to drive for too, too many hours straight. Even like, man, doing this alone. <laughs> it's very cool. It's like, I'm so glad that I did it. And I'm so glad that I did it alone first before I did it with others. Because it's really given me an opportunity to just count on myself, rely on myself, believe in myself, and and push myself to these extremes where, like, I've, like, I'm, I think if I did this with anybody else, in any capacity, like, if they were driving in their own car, or they jumped in with me, I think they would want it to be more comfortable than this. Maybe. Maybe you're watching this going, like, that's exactly what I want to do, that's how I would want to be. We can fit two swags on the tray. We can strap the esky somewhere else. Like we can ratchet strap the esky down too. And that seat can be free. It's just there because it's easier than ratchet strapping it down every night. We can do so much. <laughs> we can achieve. Uh, it's like a horse float behind me. I don't know if he's happy to be going slower or because he's like towing a trailer or if he's like, why is this guy going so slow? Because my aircon, you probably know, <laughs> other person, like the guy back there probably understands, he's probably doing the same thing, plus towing a trailer with the aircon on in the outback temperatures this time of the year. I'm sure newer cars don't overheat, or maybe, yeah, maybe just some cars aren't, like cars just aren't built for the Australian conditions. Maybe nothing can be built for the Australian conditions. I don't know. Surely there's cars. But when I was looking at um, like all the options, there was a car called the Mitsubishi Delica. And that was like, I was so sold on that. I've, I've probably journaled about it already. But it was like a, it's a van, but it's on a four wheel drive chassis. So it's a four wheel drive van, like a lifted, four-wheel drive van so you could do the van life thing and the four-wheel drive thing 
And I was like, that is it. That's what I want. They're not expensive. I was like, yeah, I'll kit that out and it'll be so good. But then I was told, like, that the, they overheat real easy. Like, this car's like overheating, but it's because I'm pushing it to the absolute extremes. But the Mitsubishi Delicas, apparently, in the Australian conditions, they just don't hold up. There's probably a bunch of people who are traveling around in them who haven't had any problems or who have put like upgraded cooling systems in them or they're just taking it easy but to do like full like northern territory off-road action like pushed in the vehicle to the limit i don't know if they will hold up that's what i was told that's why i didn't get one because that was my first choice and i was like my dad and my brother were pretty keen on them too but yeah then i started hearing a couple of stories about how they don't hold up but I'd probably like, like even on this trip, like I turn the aircon off and I'll overheat before I'll overheat my car. Because um, obviously, if you overheat your car, you're gonna cook yourself anyway because you're gonna be stuck in the middle of fucking nowhere and you're gonna run out of water and food. Like surely someone will pull over and help you. But it's gonna be an ordeal and it's gonna cost you thousands of dollars. So that's, right now it's kind of like a risk, but I'm keeping my eye on the temperature gauge, paying attention. That's probably all very helpful if you're thinking about driving around Australia. Like, probably one of the most important things to be aware of is your cooling system in your car. Like, um, because a lot of the places in the outback are 130 kilometers an hour speed limit, so you move, you can go drive fast. Like, but you'll you'll be pushing your car right to the absolute limit. And when you're pushing your car like that with the aircon on, it will, it will, um, like it's a lot for the engine to, a lot of power that the engine needs. I don't know English words for describing mechanical stuff. But yeah, so like, just something to research before you do it. Like if you're overseas and you're coming to Australia and you're gonna get a van or whatever. If you hire a van or hire a vehicle, they'll probably tell you because they don't want you to fuck their car. But like a lot of people I know come over and they'll like buy like a $500 shit box. Shit box is Australian slang for cheap car. <laughs> and they'll, yeah, just drive it for like six months and then they'll sell it again for like $400. And it's like, it cost them nothing pretty much to see the country. So when you're doing that, you gotta just be more careful and aware. Just, don't, just make sure you don't overheat your car. It's like the worst thing that could happen. Because you, like, I guess, keep an eye on your tires as well. The tires start to wear out, especially on the really hot roads in the middle of the day. They will just explode, <laughs> and that can end in disaster. You should be right, like, you should just, like, sort of roll to a stop, like a very shuddery, jolty stop, but it can be quite hectic. And obviously, the more worn your tires are, the more likely you are to puncture a tire. Like if you run over like a sharp rock or some glass or um, even those ant mounds, like watch out for those ant mounds and those termite mounds. Hitting those is like hitting a brick wall. Like they will just fuck you up. Kai's um, outback driving advice. <laughs> yeah. I knew there was something valuable coming in this journal. And um road trains, those big trucks with all the trailers, they don't, um, they don't move. Like, if they're in the middle of the road coming towards you and there's not enough room, it means you have to get off the road. <laughs> you have to drive on the dirt. I'm just um, coming through some roadworks. Um, so just wanted to pay attention to what's actually in front of me for a second. Yeah, there's a lot of roadworks, random roadworks in the middle of nowhere, building new roads and stuff, or like repairing old roads. Um, also driving, like let's just make a video about all the things of driving in like out here in Australia. So like um, dawn and dusk, like sunrise and sunset, there'll be kangaroos and shit everywhere 
like that's when they are most active or when you'll see heaps of them and also full moon um i always see like so many more kangaroos like dead ones roadkill on the side of the road during like a full moon or like when the moon's closer to being full um and you just got to be super aware and just drive a bit slower if that's what it takes like just keep an eye out don't if one does come out in front of you like don't swerve off the road and kill yourself like just um just cop it if they do damage your car like i'll be you'd be a bit um less likely to total like a big ute like this with a bull bar but if you're driving like a little sedan or a hatchback or a like a small like family kind of car hitting a decent sized roo will mean that that car will no longer be a car it will just crumble um yeah just like checking out the roadwork people they're probably seeing like the other side of the camera because it's the screen like oh what's he doing weird guy just recording himself while he's driving through the middle of nowhere what else have I got while I'm on the topic of driving around Australia you saw the snake in one of my earlier journals keep an eye out for like we've got like 10 of the deadliest snakes in the world so when you go on to like the bush toilets and stuff just be vigilant like don't go check in like like don't go like um, checking the whole perimeter of the rest area for snakes, but like just be vigilant, um, keep an eye out. They, they will avoid you, they're not trying to get involved with you, they just want to get out of your way. But if you do step on one, you can expect that you will die because they will bite you and you just won't make it to a hospital in time. That will be the end of it. Oh, but you can, what you can do is like if you get bitten on the leg or something just rip your shirt off and you you like cut off the circulation like tie your shirt around your leg and like it's a tourniquet i think it's called um so that can actually buy you minutes or hours depending on how poisonous the snake is and how bad it got you and where it got you like it, the closer to your heart the less time you have if it bit you on the ankle you got a lot more time than if it bit you on the shoulder you know um, and I said in another journal, like, the baby snakes are actually more venomous than the adult snakes in a lot of cases. Um, yeah. If you're hitting a kidna, those, they are, like, rock solid. And those, it's like hitting a spike strip. Like, I don't, I've never hit one, but I've, like, touched an echidna before. And I've, like, handled one. And they're, like, little boulders covered in spikes, like... I reckon hitting one of them would be worse than hitting one of those termite mounds or ant mounds. Wombats as well. Wombats are more, like, not so much out here, more down south. Um, in the colder sort of climates, you see them a bit more. Um, and they get really big, like, boulders with legs. And they're, they're another one that'll total your car. Sounds like so many things can just, like, end you out here. I guess they can, but you have to be unlucky and you can, you're always being vigilant, just paying attention to what's around you. Be present. It's a good practice, you know? Yeah. So, it's my survival guide for driving in Australia. Just while I've got nothing else on my mind, no, no other things going on with me. Just trying to cover some distance and get to some nice, cool places. So if you enjoyed this video, click the like button for me, leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, all those things are really helpful.